Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we started the Attack Adept, and this time we will continue the story. Because we can't even do a Void Crusade, we don't have, I think, Uther's Tarot or any of the fun stuff yet. So for now we'll just knock out story. Inquisitor, I have completed the preliminary tests on the samples from the Cascada Prime. The results are fascinating. Fascinating is an unscientific thing. I need specifics. I will need more samples. The plague is clearly of warp origin, most probably caused by an as yet unrecorded pathogen. The infection is spreading like wildfire through the hive. The agents and the treacherous cultures have already begun exploiting the situation, leading an open rebellion. According to Vox reports, the local enforcers have been overwhelmed, but there is an operational Astra Militarum outpost in the vicinity. Affirmative. The area has been secured. Apologies for ruining the mo- Kind of funny how the Inquisitor was saying Cascadia Prime, while everybody else says Cascada. And then, when I hear that, I think of the singer who did the song Every Time We Touch. All I can think of is that song. The bass in that song went hard though. No, my robots! Uh, shabam, heal! I gotta get faster at that. Man, this is sure taking a while. Seems like enough time for me to talk about something! Yay! But yeah, between videos and in my free time, I've been continuing my playthrough of uh, Mass Effect, the whole trilogy. I, I don't want to play Andromeda. What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Empyrean Pulse. Why do I have that now? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to play Andromeda because it just, it makes me sad because that game had potential. And of course they're like, no, we're not going to have the Quarians or the Volus or anybody like that in the main game. That's DLC. Well, why did you lock main story character, like races, out of the game? Especially because people like me, the Talizora simps, are not happy. Years later, we're still not happy. Only good thing about Andromeda was Vetranix. Only good character. But that's because Turians are pretty great. And Garrus is my homeboy. Yeah, been playing through the... I'm on Mass Effect 3. And I sit in there thinking about, you know, Anthem and how there was that whole debacle of the uh, the Bioware magic. That stupid saying they had that is just insane. But I was thinking about it and it really, it dawned on me, last night specifically. The... I'll let them finish talking. Probably organic viral transmitters. My theory is that the pustules are emitting gaseous pathogens to hasten up the spreading of the plague. Man, I can relate to gaseous pathogens. Me when I eat Taco Bell. Uh, but I was sitting here thinking about the Bioware magic, and I realized what the Bioware magic is, because it does exist. It is not their technical skills, because their games are pretty meh. It is their world building. Bioware makes amazing worlds you are interested in and want to be in. The gameplay is pretty generic. 
third-person shooter with abilities. Me wow. That's astounding. It's simple. But the Mass Effect setting or uh, Thetis in Dragon Age, you're interested, you're invested, you want to see more of the world. Their gameplay does not pull you in, not in the slightest. Because I sat there while I was playing, because they disabled the multiplayer, thankfully, because otherwise you have to do multiplayer to get the best possible endings. And I sat there thinking, because there's the Armax Arsenal arena, where you set up bot fights and you go in alone or with your team and you have to beat enemies. You have different modifiers and what have you. And I thought, why couldn't they have added or expanded the Armax Arena to be the multiplayer? Oh, you set up a team of bots that go with you. And you do missions. Pick your modifiers. And it's a separate thing. Because that would be fun. I'd love to play some of the characters they made for the multiplayer that you just can't play now. They are gone. Making progress, I see. That's the second location. Because then if you look at the, the Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer, it is kneecapped in terms of the number of characters. They also reworked the skill system, which didn't need a rework. But that's just me. The result of an artificially created mutagenic pathogen of Nurgle. And only a very powerful entity of chaos is capable of creating something like that. The analysis of the patterns verified my theory. The outbreak originated from a specific location in this lower hive. Send me the coordinates. First, we need to purchase it. Whilst this hive is going to But. It just. I, there's a lot of things I wish they would do with Mass Effect, like rework the skill system. I would rather see skills be something where you go, oh, okay, you are your attack player. Then you can pick subclasses dedicated to stuff, instead of being like, oh, you're tech gun, tech biotic, or pure tech. Let me make those decisions where I want make what is effectively prestige classes. Because they used to do, you know, Night Seal Republic, which was a early kind of attempt at a CRPG for consoles. It was good. This wretch was more than a simple I must have some the entity that orchestrated this outbreak on the world. Perhaps you should evaluate the option to capture it alive, Inquisitor. You are doing the Emperor's work, Inquisitor! I don't know what I was supposed to contemplate capturing alive, but whatever it is, it's dead. But yeah, I just... I, I do laugh at the... Oh, it's the Bioware magic. Nah. When you don't even know what your magic is, that's kind of scary and disappointing. That's like, just reminded me the stuff for the, um, what is it? Um, Dragon Age Blood Wolf. Or, whatever it is, something wolf. Dreadwolf. One, the fact that he's like neon and like this pseudo... Like, 80s style logo for the game is really weird. I don't know why you would try to go with that neon, kinda techno-y vibe. It's a fantasy game. But then, on top of that, a bunch of leaks came out, and then they're saying, oh, the multiplayer? Or not, there's no there's no multiplayer. Which is fine. The, the Dragon Age multiplayer is kinda butt cheeks. But... It's hack and slash inspired by God of War, and you can't apparently control your teammates. And instantly I thought, oh, this is gonna be horrible. 
because being able to tell your teammates what to use when was very good because you could actually set up combos and disable a big enemy so you can focus on other things otherwise if there's any like possession or command abilities that turn enemies guarantee they will be used against the most insignificant enemies Give me the chest. You that as long as the pathogen remains virulent in the host population, your achievement will be temporary. When I burn out the source of this blasphemous plague, the officio medica can deal with the survivors. So that just happened. But yeah, so this hack and slashy gameplay that I'm just. I don't get why everybody's like, oh, we need to copy God of War now. No, please don't. God of War wasn't that good. It really, really wasn't. I want there to be a God of War game where they flat out go, Kratos, you remember your wife and kid that you abandoned when you left Greece? That you killed and left in, like, Erebus, effectively? You remember them? Why'd you start a new family? Just so you could potentially do the same thing again. You know, point out that at his core he is just an animal. He is just a god of war. He doesn't know anything better. Because that would actually be interesting. Deconstruct the character and make them come to realize what they are. Because otherwise, this game, the past two God of Wars have felt like it's just Kratos trying to hide from who he is. Being like, no, I can be better than just killing people and then indiscriminately killing, anyways. It's like, you. At this point, you aren't showing you are better. You are showing that you never changed from when you were. Ares soldier and the combat style is just kind of boring especially when Bioware games have had this standard of that texture is borked but they've had this standard of having more of an RPG style of combat and then removing that potentially for hack and slash. I'm not interested. That's what kind of scares me about a potential new Mass Effect, because there has been rumblings of a new one. I'm like, please don't make this like, Call of Duty. As much as I would like a first-person Mass Effect, I'm also terrified of the prospect and would, at that point, rather prefer to have just another third-person game. Hey, Catafron Destroyer. Cool. Three levels. Okay, that's a lot to work with. Now oh, that HP for hit is really nice. That's a hard sell. Okay, more HP per hit. Okay, we'll just take that then. Even more damage. Eh, yeah, but that's specifically for the Siloy Constructor, or Combustor, that's kind of a waste. Intel. Oh yeah, this guy doesn't have a Intel dump yet. We gotta start on that right away. Yeah, we'll take it. That's not that good, especially because chance to add heat vulnerability, that's a pretty big bump up. Don't really care about data flux, even though it is a stat up for me. At the moment, I'm not that pressed. 
Again with data flux. I don't need it. That's tempting. Max energy shield for regenerating shields. But I need the summons. I could get rid of the Healy spot. I just like using it because it's decent. And that one. How is a level 12 piece of armor worse than a level 1? Explain. Eh, that's more loot quality. Add physical vulnerability, physical resist, eh. We'll use it. Haven't gotten a uh, radium carbine yet, so we're still kinda spinning our wheels there. Unequip those because we're going to swap you out for a Catafron Destroyer. Life drain for range skills. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I don't know, I could do a lot with either of these. Let's try this out. Let's go the Phosphor Blaster, and then we'll upgrade the weapon. Okay, so it just brings it up to like whatever level you are. Well, what, what good is that? I mean, there's probably some good to it. It's just kind of dumb. If I wanted to, I could do like dual cataphrons, but yeah, it reserves 25% data flux. See, and that's why I don't care when it's like, oh, well, we can give you more data flux. It, it, it reserves percentages. So if my percentage is high, or my number is high, that just means my percentage takes more. Nothing changes. I've analyzed your logs. The time has come for you to join me. And Puritan. Your powers could save. Yeah, I've already kind of skipped over listening to his voice. It's got a filter. He sounds mechanical. Beep boop. It's neat, but it's not mandatory, and we'll hear it enough over time. You are approaching the site. I didn't do my passives, I just realized that. There we go, shield. What else do we want to quick add? Guess we'll start here, because for the Cataphrons, we'll move to here, so I can get the Grav Cannon Crush skill, an area of effect. Times when you try to protect yourself. 
Yeah, as I'm recording this, I saw there's an article mentioning that uh, Dead Island 2, they moved up their release date. And that they've gone gold now. And I'm instantly like, oh, I, I don't like that. Simply because I never... If a studio goes, hey, we need more time to do a thing, I'd rather them use all the time than go, oh, we finished it early. Because that makes me think you rushed it. If you need a month, take the month. Don't take a couple weeks and then go, oh, well, we actually didn't need all that time. Nah, you probably will need it for something else. Spend the time bug fixing. Get your QA guys a little more work. I'm sure there's something you can do with the time that will help. I would just rather have that extra time be utilized than tossed away. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just nervous about Dead Island because just the way the people at E3 and I think the like game showcase they did in the winter or like December, the Game Awards, they were like, oh yeah, it's going to be irreverent and just like the old games. And I'm like, that really wasn't how the old games were. I remember when Dead Island came out. Hey, we actually got a Empyrean Elite. Cool. Neat. That was a lot of stuff. I guess that meter looked like lasts between missions. It's really cool. But yeah, Dead Island, it just it worries me. It's kind of like when you see something has been adapted for modern audiences. Especially game remakes and remasters. Never have any faith in it. Because to me that screams a lack of understanding. And it also just it kind of bugs me because then people... It makes people seem like they're far flimsier than they are. Like, oh, they can't handle this character now because they said offensive things. They can handle it just fine. Things don't need to change. It's, like I had said before, with the trigger warnings and, like, the content warnings in... Ah, uh, trying to blank in Dead Space 2, the Dead Space remake. It doesn't need to be there. You're coming into this and you should know, hey, these things are what happened. You don't have to know the story beats, but you should know, hey, there's going to be violence. There's going to be jump scares. There's going to be spooky stuff. And you're playing a horror game. How you can play a horror game and then be mad that there's horror is... It's something else. But so that just... I don't know, I hope Dead Island 2 is good. It's been in development hell long enough. And it'd be cool to see Embracer actually have a game come out that doesn't suck. Because Saints, Saints Row did not help them. I mean, come on. It, it was so bad, Volition got dissolved. The whole studio just got rolled into Gearbox. That is... That's not a good sign. That's never a good sign when that happens. It 
is time. Unleash your powers on the Horde. Are you sure you want me to do this? This is your primary function. Should you fail to comply, you will probably die. It is... too much. I don't know if I can control it. Yes, I can do this. Perish! Initial test phase completed. This location. Correct. I'm it was wise of you to call. No one will withstand my righteous fury. Try to keep your head clear. I do wonder what's gonna happen though. Like volition getting rolled into gearbox. Does that mean we're gonna get a Borderlands 4 faster? I just don't know if I can even trust a new Borderlands, considering, like, the Tiny Tina's Wonderlands was not a good game. Calibrating teleportarium sequences. Chance of failure calculated unacceptable. Suggestion. Nullify the source of Imperium fluctuations. And this hardly a revelation. The teleport area. <laughs> Just like the guy in South Park with the planet Arium. God, I miss old South Park. The new stuff just isn't as good. Having coherent, like, season-long storylines did not help that show. I like just random stuff. Mind your own business one episode and suddenly it's like, Oh yeah, here's Dr. Mephisto trying to put an ass on everything. Like, that was always funny. Dr. Mephisto is just a weirdo. And it was like, haha, butts. Or the Worcestershire sauce episode where it turns people into zombies. The pink eye zombies. Pink eye! Get away from me, Johnson! I don't want no goddamn pink eye! Like, that was such a good episode. And then it was like, chef, zombie chef looking at a magazine about like sluts and it has Cartman's mom in it. Like, that was funny. It's stupid, like, sophomoric humor. And I see nothing wrong with that humor. Chances of successful teleportation are currently at 95%. Run me the worst case scenario for the Astartes and the Alpha Pariah. Their physical bodies will disintegrate. Regarding the spiritual component, you can access reference material flagged as unconfirmed. I find the chances suboptimal, but acceptable. Damn, 95%? In XCOM, that's like a 15% chance of success. Man, we haven't had an XCOM game in a while. I just remember the last one was XCOM 2. No, that's a lie. Chimera Squad exists. Which was a cool idea, but it just kind of never really went anywhere. The ideas were interesting. Like, hey, what if aliens got along and it was SWAT? I said before, I still think they're setting up for... Either Terror from the Deep, but then that renders Chimera Squad no longer canon in this storyline, or they're setting up Apocalypse, which Apocalypse would be pretty sweet. I just know they made that Marvel Midnight Suns game and... I... I've watched it, just doesn't seem that interesting. But I also think part of it was the guy I watch, he normally does XCOM, he was doing like paid ads for the game. And while I can't fault someone for doing ads, it would be like, This is Captain America! And it's like a two minute clip that's just provided footage that he just puts on the channel. I was like, oh, this is stupid. If I wanted to just watch an ad for the game like that, I'd just go to 
the Fire Axis YouTube channel or whatever and watch that. At least if you're going to try to sell someone something, make it a little more believable. Do you see? Oh darn, that's not a good sign at all. Those things just melted. Hey, orange implant. I will take that. That's always a good sign. Because orange means good. Knowing my luck, it's going to be like, improve suppression, improve suppression damage, boosted poison damage, or boosted warp damage, and something else where it's an absolute waste of time. I just thought about what I talked about before the Kingdom Under Fire stuff. Man, I miss that game. I miss all the kind of more eccentric mashups genres we had. Because they were good ideas. I had to laugh. I saw there was news saying that if Activision Blizzard doesn't get sold to uh, to Microsoft. Couldn't think of Microsoft for the moment. But if they get sold to Mi if they don't get sold to Microsoft, Bobby Kotick is sticking to working at Activision. And I saw people were like, "Why would he do that?" And I'm like, "Cause if he sells, he gets a big chunk of money, so he wants to stick around to sell to someone." It makes sense. Every big, like every executive does that same thing because it means a payout for them. It's not a new concept. Oh, I finally got roped into seeing this. Fabulous Bill! By the Emperor, the Primogenitor. Ah! Inquisitor! I've been expecting you. I'm truly disappointed, though, that you came alone. I know. I've been well aware of your plan for a while now. I've been hunting your kind for a long time. But I never dared to hope that the Dark Gods would send me the one who has the Alpha Pariah. <laughs> Tell me, where is she now? I will obviously not divulge any information to you, traitor. The Anathema Ultima, the Alpha Subject. Call her whatever you want, but she is mine! I have been trying to reclaim my precious experiment since that perfidious Tiberius cheated out of my hands! You might begin to see a pattern here. Oh no, I will take you alive, Inquisitor. We will experiment, you and I, to see where the threshold of suffering lies for you. Then you will be ready to denounce your master and beg for my forgiveness. I don't like the voice they gave Fabius Bile. It just, it sounds like they're trying way too hard to make him menacing. When it's like, you don't have to. Wow, I died instantly. That's a neat trick. Of 
course, I summon everything and then they leave. Yeah, I just, I don't like his voice. It's too, like, modulated. It goes from, like, oh, this is a villain to this sounds like a cartoon villain. I would rather have it be a deeper, more gravelly voice that still sounds like a human than something that just sounds like a theremin that got broken. There's levels to how you can make someone sound menacing. And that really wasn't it. Inquisitor, we have a breach of Oh, now we have the Dark Eldar raid. Okay. Actually, let's check our gear quick. And that radium carbine, we can toss that on. Not bad. Fear on hit is kind of don't really care too much. Okay, so I don't get as much max energy shield, but I do get some other stuff. So we'll take that for now. Better loot quality and HP regen. Instant take. Bonus damage when enemies aren't close, that's fine. Slow on burning skill hit, doable. Loot quality, yeah. Okay, that's worth it. We'll go with that one. I mean, that's better, realistically. More HP, more energy shield... More HP for Constructs and Damage Reduction, though it's not much. I don't really want to use Void Shield. Don't really want to use different kinds of armor like that, because they're not as useful. I don't... Okay, so there's a value to the XP gain items. I just don't want to use XP gain stuff. It's kind of pointless to me. Relies on Tarantula Turret, don't have that. That one's a bit better. The feared enemies is worthless, but the loot quantity will mean I can replace it faster. I think that's about it for all that loot. Oh yeah, I used to have, uh... I have the tech tree I have to go through. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a bit. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.